In the last video, we were talking about AND OR truth tables. In this video, I will be showing you IF THEN and IF AND ONLY IF statements. So let's get started with the IF THEN statements. IF THEN. So how do, oh, sorry about that, how do these work? So let me actually choose different colors. So it's easier for you to understand. if alpha holds then then beta so instead of writing statement one and two I'm writing alpha and beta so I'm just gonna write this for once for you so that you can understand it beta is the equivalent so this is equivalent to statement one and beta is equivalent to statement two so if statement one then statement two which is the same as if alpha then beta so alpha is called the premise the thing that comes after so the thing that comes after if will be called premise and beta is called the conclusion so anything that comes after then will be called conclusion normally in proofs we are given the premise and we can assume the premise and our goal is normally to prove the conclusion now one thing that you want to notice is that the if then statements have a direction it's non commutative and we will focus um, not so much on commutativity which is a more of a linear algebra concept however we all know that um, let me give you an example to sh show you what I mean by this so if we have 5 plus 2 we know that's equal to 2 plus 5 and any child any uh, grade 1 student or actually let's make grade 3 any any grade 3 student uh, will be able to tell you this that this is 7 therefore this is 7 therefore this is the same thing this is called commutativity you can you can because you can switch the elements and it still gives you the same product and don't confuse that with multiplication and um, yeah just to just want to be clear so if you understand this you know that well addition is some sort of operator this is called an operator and in some textbooks they call this a binary a binary operator so let's put that in quotations think of if then as operators and these are logical logical operators operators these are responsible for you uh, to actually understanding uh, w what the statement is trying to uh, say so unlike and and or this has a direction and and or doesn't really matter you can if 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 like when you create the truth tables it doesn't matter which side you assume as alpha and which side you assume beta i have been teaching it as alpha and beta which makes uh, a little bit it makes it a little bit easier for you to understand what the if and then statement is so there is no proper truth table for this so i'm just going to teach it to you uh in in normal terms so you have to understand that for if then so let me actually create a new page for this so the the truth concept let's not call it the truth table let's call it the truth concept now we know that we're focusing on if and then then and we know that statement one uh, I call alpha and statement two beta now if the first statement is true and the second statement so if alpha is true then beta is false then the overall truth of the statement will be false now this is all you need to remember this is the only one for if then statements that will produce a false a false result as the overall statement if you have this being true and this being true this will be true surprisingly if this is false and this is false then this will be false I'll give you an example for this uh, and if you have false and then uh, true then that will also be true so 
sorry i put false there this is supposed to be true this is true the only false uh, result that we can ever get from if then is if the premise is true this is called the premise this is true and the conclusion is false that's the only way that the overall statement is false any other way is supposed to be true sorry about this now this this is very important you have to you might be saying well ranty i don't really trust you this seems a, a little bit shady so let me give you let me give you an example here so example if um, two is less than one then humans have three legs now how do you do these sort of problems well you look at the premise first is this true is two less than one no it isn't we know this two is not less than one therefore this is false now then humans have three legs now you judge the conclusion do humans have three legs no we don't this is false too now by what i told you the overall statement has to be true and you might be wondering why is this this was clearly false the conclusion was clearly false why does the statement have to be true this is because if you are living in a world if you were living in a world where two is less than one so this is how you think about this our truth is not their truth our truth is that one is greater than two sorry <laughs> one is less than two however their truth is that two is less than one their truth is not equal to ours therefore since this is their truth which is our false this is not our reality therefore any other portion of our reality which is false has to be their truth so humans humans have three legs this is false for us However, in their world, this is true. This, okay, so, this is false for us. However, in their world, since their world does not follow the same logic, this is what this whole lecture is about. It's all, it's logic. If their world does not follow the conditions, the rules that our world does, then having three legs is perfectly normal for them so humans humans have three legs would be true for them now if we were to put something uh something true here so let me change this so uh let me change this and let me put two so if two is less than one then humans have two legs so what what would that be saying that would be saying if two is less than one you think to yourself this is some imaginary we think about it as a as a parallel universe in a different in a different universe where two is less than one humans have two legs however this holds for our universe this is true for us so therefore this has to be this is wrong therefore the whole thing has to be wrong either it's tr either it's false for for uh, for both therefore we're just describing their reality otherwise it has to be it has to be false if one is false and the other one is true both have to be false in order for the thing to be true okay let's look back both have to be false in order for it to be true so the only way it can be false the overall statement the only way it can be false is if the premise is true so we could say if one is less than two then humans have uh, three legs 
That doesn't make sense because one is less than two in our world. However, that doesn't mean that we have three legs. So this is how you think about it. The only takeaway for if then statements that you need to have uh, fundamentally is that the only one that makes the whole statement false is if the premise is true and if the conclusion is false. So now let's do if and only if statements. If and only if statements. Now this is normally abbreviated to if. It's a double F. This is how we write it. And normally how you, uh, how you would have it is alpha, which is my statement one, alpha if and only if beta. So this is the same thing. So, okay, one thing that I didn't mention with if then statements is that, so let me actually write that again. So if alpha then beta, this is equivalent to alpha this arrow beta this this is what we will be using this is actually quite important this is what we will use for our proofs and then this is the same as this and then some some textbooks have beta if uh, alpha some other textbooks have uh, alpha only if only if beta and then this is another one. We have already done not, so this might not be as confusing to you. So not statement one, so that would be alpha or, so let me change my color, or statement two, which is beta for us. Or some people put beta is necessary, necessary for alpha, which is our statement one. And statement one, so alpha is sufficient, is sufficient for beta. However, as I said before, all of these are equivalent. This, this is this. This is the same thing as this. These are all the same thing. However, they are more, they make them more complicated than they need to be. So we will be using the easiest one, which is this. We will just use an arrow. This means A implies. This arrow, this arrow means implies. That's what this means. It means implies. So this will be used for if, uh, if then statements. So now getting back on if and only ifs. I just told you that if and only if can be abbreviated to if. And for if and only ifs, we will use a double, double-sided arrow like this. And it will normally be uh, alpha, uh, if and only if, and beta. In your mind, translate this symbol to if and only if. So if I write alpha, if, beta, this so let me put this in brackets to make it easier for you to understand. This will be equal to saying alpha, double-sided arrow, and then beta. Now there is a truth table for if and only ifs, and let me just teach it to you rather than waste your time any more than I have to. So, oh yeah, and, and another thing that I should probably teach you is that if if and only if is a two-sided if then. So it, you, you can see that from the arrow. If A, so alpha, if and only if beta. This is the same thing as saying alpha. Uh, so if alpha, then beta, and beta, um, so if beta, then alpha. These are the same thing. This is what this means. An if and only if statement is a collection, so it's two if then statements added together. It's they just instead of writing this huge mess, we just use this little abbreviation because it's it's better and easier. Now to do this, um, in order to judge the truth of if and only if statements, you will need to use truth tables. And let me teach those to you. So the truth table for if and only if is the following. So you put if and then you draw your lines. Sorry. Let me let me let me do a better job of drawing lines. 
Okay, so let me put true here. True, false, true, false. Now for this, if the premise is true and the conclusion is true, then it has to be true. If the premise is true and the conclusion is false, then it has to be false. If the premise is false and the conclusion is true, then it's tr then it's false. And if the premise is false and the conclusion is false, then it has to be true. Now you could break this down with if uh, and then statements as well, and then you could see how I created this. However, the bottom line is, for real analysis, you just want to learn the truth tables for all the different logic operators. So what I have done, and let me re-summarize that for you right here. So this is for if and only if. Now, just as a this is the end of logic. Uh, of, of the logic uh, section, at least to the degree that we need to be uh, aware of logic. So this is for if and only ifs. For let me do and or not and then uh, if then. If then. So just as a summary, just so you have everything uh, at one in yeah in in one spot so let let me put and or and there there are no truth tables for the for the latter so let me just so let me just do these for you so this could be true this could be uh, false this could be true this could be false this could be true this could be false this could be true and this could be false this is alpha so premise this is beta this is alpha this is beta alpha beta so for and it's true 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 false 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 true is false and false false is false for or statements true true is true true false is true false true is true and false false is false for not you basically if 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 the thing is true you you convert it into into false and if it's false you convert it into true it just changes the truth of the whole statement and for if then statements i told you that the only one that's false is if the if if alpha is true so alpha is true uh, and beta is false then the overall statement has to be false any other arrangement of these will be true so let me actually write this for you. So if false uh, and then beta is false, that's true. If this is true and then uh, beta is true, then that's true. If it's if 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 the premise is false and the conclusion is true, then that's also that's also true. Now a symbol that I have used here that you might not be familiar with is is this this symbol means and so, and so this is a truth table for ifs and to make it clear this is for premise so if the premise is true you locate it over here and then this is for conclusion and you locate this right here and let's say it's false so you would say well it's true and then it's false therefore the overall statement has to be false so this is for if and only if this is for and this is for or this is the overall general idea of knots and we will go deeper into the whole the whole uh, structure of how we use knots and then if and then this is basically what you need to know and hopefully you found this video helpful